just no, no one's showing up. her attention. I don't know if she's going to get somebody. He keeps saying that. He's been saying that for about 12 minutes now.
you know as well, the battery that they've got for this power pack is not going to last for this game. There's like a quarter life left on it. So someone definitely has to come up. I'm just going to use the other headset. But the, this battery's going to die in a second, right? It's, it's got no life left in it. All right, Howard Samura with you here. Courtside Langley Event Center getting set for the second game of the day here. The BC Senior Boys AA Basketball Championships opening here. A four-day run at the LEC. Great to be with you here courtside. The Delview Raiders of North Delta, the R.C. Palmer Griffins of Richmond, set to take to the court here in... Opening tip there, going to the Griffins. Coached by Paul Eberhardt, the veteran coach here. Very quickly into play, that's Gurjeet Puni, number five, cross court to Harmon Mann, number 22. Puni again, pass cross court, the big three ball on the baseline, side iron out by Judy, number 10. Antonio Judy will be calling his name a lot in this game. Very quickly down the floor though, for the Raiders, is Wawi Untalan. Quick basket to give the Raiders the quick 2-0 lead. Both of these teams love to push the tempo. We know you're going to see a great basketball game here today. Underneath the basket, the easy layup opportunity missed by the Griffins. But they're going to get the rebound back and get another shot at it. Traveling called, though, on the baseline corner to Harmon Mann. The turnover there. And so the Raiders with another chance here to improve on... This quick 2-0 start, they love to get up and down the court, and we saw Wowie really get down the floor. Here he is again, Wintalan. Takes the three from the top, can't get it. Tip off the glass, though, is going to go for the Raiders. Sammy Graywall. So Graywall with a, giving the Raiders a quick 4-0 lead here. Pooney again running the point here for Palmer. Man on the side. This Palmer team ranked amongst the top five in BC in double A virtually the entire season. Drive to the basket, going off the glasses, Gurjeet Puni. Tough shot, but he gets it to fall. The Griffins finally on the scoreboard. Four to two the score here on Talon. Running the point, cross court. Kanas back up top to Antalan. Little head fake move into the paint and a Crazy behind the back pass to Graywall on the baseline. Sammy's going to go baseline, knock it down, draw the contact, and get to the free throw line. Solid start here. Not sure they've got the score correct here, though. I think it's 6 to 2, the score, not 4 to 4. Graywall to the free throw line here. And the big guy with the 
big release. And the score will stay at 6-2. to two. Let's hope they correct that score. Delview leading this game 6-2. to two. The crew from North Delta drive to the basket there by the Griffins. Number five, Pooney can't get to the rim. Delview doing a solid job here early for Vlad Nikic, the head coach of this Raiders team. And they will let fly. That's Reyna. Jayton, the big three ball won't go for him. Jumping in the passing lane, though, stealing that uh, pass from Jayton is number 10, Juti. And Juti will go to the free throw line. This kid has been a monster all season long. The number's huge, and Paul Eberhardt's coached a lot of great players in his career. Calls Judy one of the most talented offensive players he's coached in his long coaching career. So you know that's a special kind of player. Steps up and hits the first free throw. Six to three, the score here. Judy makes the second. Little hesitation move there by Antalan, and he puts up a one-hander off the glass. I know, I, I know, I don't want to use my own headset. And I've been calling for like 25 minutes and nobody comes out. Can you, can you hook up my, can you hook up my headphones? Okay, we're just going to take a break with some technical difficulties, but we will be back. All right, Howard Samura back with you. Um, just want to get a quick refresher on how I adjust my level and my own headset here. Coming through a little bit loud. So we can turn that down just a bit. Is that okay? Hope you can hear us uh, out there. Sorry for the technical delay, but the LEC staff has us back on track. Howard Samura here, LEC. Center court having a great time watching the Delview Raiders play the RC Palmer Griffins of Richmond Delview with... Uppel now in the half court. Jayton Uppel, the cross court pass. Going for the big three in the baseline corner by Canis. Won't go. So the Palmer Griffins a chance to try and steady themselves. A slow start for them. Trailing this game eight to four. There is Judy, great handle on the ball right to the rim and Antonio Judy. Right to the rim for the layup, eight to six the score here. This Palmer team, incredibly talented, but I'll tell you that kid, Jaden Upple can hit from anywhere on the court and I've seen it throughout his basketball career. Now, throughout the North Delta area, first at Sands and of course the last four years here at Delview and a great player knocks down the long range NBA three, making it 11 to six. So Upple, a great shot there for Delview. Here are the Griffins looking for a cutting Harvir Body on the baseline. Won't go there. Timeout on the floor. 11 to 6 the score here. 536 left. And apologies for the technical difficulties. I will explain here at the Langley Event Center, obviously, four BC Championship tournaments being held at the same time. They have called out to the officials around the province there. All the officials that you'll ever <laughs> expect to see all in one place here and a technical crew trying to get four separate web streams going between four separate buildings. The programs just arrived and they're being handed out in droves. Same with the accreditation, the fans settling in and the ability to go between these buildings if you have a multiple pass is a great thing. So great to see BC High School basketball 
all conglomerated in this one spot for the next two weeks. Of course, the boys 3A and 4A championships happening next week here at the LEC. Today, already on the boys' side of this double-A draw, we've had a fantastic performance by Gert Dollywall of the Southern Okanagan Hornets. The Hornets from Oliver, the 94-69 winner of the Highland Raiders of Comox. Dollywall in that game, 15 of 33 from the field, shot 11 of 21 from beyond the arc. 50 points, five assists, and who cares about the rest? 30, 38 minutes, 50 points. What a performance by Girk Dollywall of the Southern Okanagan Hornets. A standard here to meet in this tournament. Raiders now set to inbound the ball. Check that Griffins. On the baseline. Active hands by the Raiders, though, getting into the passing lanes there. Recovery by the Griffins, and Pooney, number five, gets the ball back. Pooney and Antelon guarding each other in this game thus far. Well, not quite, but there's Pooney with the three ball. Side iron out, and Antelon with the rebound. That's Wowie, and no kidding about that name. The best name in BC High School basketball, Wowie Antelon. Number nine to Jayton Oppel, and Jayton puts up the big three. He is not even... Checking his feet, he's just hoisting. Coming up a bit strong on that three ball. Here are the Raiders guarding on defense and the ball right through the legs. That was Judy going to Pooney right through his legs and into the crowd. So the Raiders hanging tough here and they will. And that is Dew, number 24, coming into the game. Upple to Antelon. Wowie to the free throw line from about 18. He's going to drain that shot. Wowie is indeed the case. That was a great shot. Antelon going for the steal and can't get it. Trying to pick the pocket of Pooney. This Delview team bringing a lot of energy. And Vlad Nikic there. Emotional coach. You can say the same about Paul Eberhardt at the other end. We did the Double-A boys preview show at the LEC two weekends ago. This is one of the first round games that we spotlighted. Despite the seedings, you knew this was going to be a good game. Just based on the fact that both teams bring that high tempo, aggressive nature to the offensive side of the basketball court. So Delview and Palmer just underway and looks like it's going to be a great one here from the LEC. 13 to 6. Pooney coming quickly up the floor on Talon guarding him. Palmer needs to find their emotion because Delview has brought an early great cut on the baseline, but it's going to get called, and Judy's not too sure what happened, but Vlad Nikic, the Delview coach, inspiring his guys to cheer, and there is a wave of emotion sweeping through this Delview team right now. They are feeling good about the start they've gotten off to. Paul Eberhardt unhappy with what's going on here in the building, but 13-6, to 6, the emotion thick in the air here at the LEC, and we're in the opening round of the BC Boys AA Basketball Championships. Timeout on the floor. The Delview team, one of the few around the province that actually wears their surnames on the back of their jerseys, so if I get too blind, I just have to look up and see who's on the floor here for this group. Talented, great start by Delview, 13 to six, a seven point lead here, 4-12. Remaining the opening quarter of play, Howard Samura here, bringing you the best of BC boys double-A basketball. I'll be floating around the complex today. After this game, taking a couple of games to write for the province newspaper, but back on the mic for girls double-A action. As well as another boys double-A game here later in the day. I believe I'll be calling Golden versus Valley View a real slice of uh, BC basketball. Apple now set to shoot. That's Jayton knocking one down there, 14 to six. Palmer not able to settle into what it wants to do here. Apple making them both. He's hit a long distance three as well. So Jayton with five here early in this game. 
Antalan now running the point with O'Connell. O'Donnell checked that in and up. Dow the entry, kick it back out to Jaden for three, and he will knock it down. Up with the big three ball. And the threes are falling in this gym. We talked about the previous game. And the fact that Dollywall hit 11 threes in that game. Upple's hit two already. And we're early in this game. He's got the range. Cam Palmer start to dictate the tempo here. They're being tripled on the scoreboard. It's 18 to six and Delview is an inspired group. They're playing great ball denial here. On the baseline, Dow though will get called for the foul on the drive to the basket by Pune. So Gurjeet Pune, strong take to the basket. So Dow gets called for the foul there. As Saran into Spell, who sub on the floor for the Raiders. There's a three ball hoisted, side iron out, and will fall. No basket though. Bouncing off the back of the goal and through. So keep the score at 18 to six and give the ball back to the Raiders. Delview now coming back down the floor, Untalan running the point. Back up to Oppel who's gonna miss the long three. He's missed a couple in a row, but he's got the range, and when he gets on a roll, look out. There's an up and under move there by Judy on the baseline, gets Wowie up into the air, and I believe Wowie, Untalan, and will get called for the foul. Judy sent to the free throw line there. 18 to six, the score had been locked. Nikic wants a timeout. So the Raiders. All right, back with you. And thanks to the LAC staff for all the technical assistance we've been getting here courtside. I hope we're streaming to you live and clear and in full color. I can't. I can hear. And we're back. Apologies for the technical. Uh, I'm, I'm coming through loud and clear. I can hear myself good. I hope that's good. I hope you can hear me. Howard Samura here courtside at the LEC. Game two of the BC Boys AA Championship draw is a fantastic start here by the Delview Raiders of North Delta, the 18-6 lead over the provincially ranked R.C. Palmer Griffins of Richmond. Of course, the Griffins, a winner at the quad A tier, or we should say a winner at the old triple A tier. I'm going to get myself in trouble here. A winner at the old triple A tier, a runner up at the old double A tier, and now one of the favorites to win at the new double A tier. And we're talking about a world with four tiers. So we'll see what happens. But the Griffins in a bit of trouble here early, trailing 18 to 6. It's not so much Delview's offense as it is their defense and their ability to keep Palmer from establishing anything. That's Judy, though, stepping up and hitting the first free throw. So Antonio Judy, one of the most talented offensive players in the province. We've got a couple of those guys in this game here today, Antalan and couple or two guys that can fill it up. So Judy makes them both and we're seeing full court pressure for the first time here by the Griffins. And they will foul Upple as he tries to come up the floor. Not too sure what happened there. Either way, the Raiders, now with the ball, Kanas coming over half court, skipping in those bright neon shoes as he comes across the court to Uppel. Jayton Uppel, the drive and dish on the baseline. Dow kicking it back up to Uppel. Jayton will hoist. 
and he will knock down the big three, and he shows the emotion. Knocking down a triple from 30 feet is Jayton Uppel. Huge shot for the Raiders, 21 to eight. And what a start for the Delview Raiders. Unranked, had to win a wild card game against GW Graham just to get here, and they have come shot out of a cannon. Uppel with the huge triple. 21 to eight now the score. So this building has a karma for the three ball. There's no question about that. 21-10 after the Griffin step up. But what a start here by Delview. 2.48 left in the opening quarter. Emotion, a big part of what they're doing here. They have to maintain that. They have to keep the same level of play going for the whole 40 minutes here against this Palmer team, which comes in as a big favorite. And here's Uppel. Quickly in the corner, they go for the three ball, and that's going to miss badly. Ball to Palmer. Solarea, I believe, shooting that three from the corner. Pooney for the Griffins. Some physicality down on the baseline, fighting through a screen. The foul being called there on Harmon Mann, number 22. Man checking out of the game, coming in. Sonny Pooney, number eight. Now this Palmer team really rendered impotent offensively in the opening quarter of play. And here's Reyna, he's gonna step up and hit another, shoot another three. This one won't draw iron. I believe he's two for five from the field, but he's hit, he's hit a couple of pretty impressive ones. Has Upple, and Upple there defensively deflecting the ball out of bounds. But entry pass coming from Damian Herf, number 11 of the Griffins. Sonny Pooney, Herf the game. Takanaka intercepted quickly down the floor is Upple, double clutch, misses the layup. Delview's getting hands on the basket underneath, and I believe that was Judy that came across to get the swat. On Sammy Graywall. By the way, the foul called in Saran there. Arshdeep Saran with the free throw attempt. The Raiders maintaining this intensity as Mann steps up for Palmer at the minor officials table, set the check in. Saran will back iron out those Delview Raiders though with the advantage in reach underneath, get a tip and a, another chance at the basket underneath, missing a gimme underneath and an offensive rebound sticking with it. And that was Saran, Arshdeep Saran, great play underneath the basket, the second effort Putting Delview out to a 23 to 10 lead. These Raiders doing a great job here early. Fantastic play. The one thing we will say though, are the Raiders, or the check that the Griffins are getting their share of free throw trips. Saran getting called for the foul, his first to the game, and uh, that sends Gurjeet Pooney to the free throw line. Pooney. Running the point here for this Griffins team is going to knock down that shot. But for Palmer, it's all about getting stops and getting into transition, getting some easy baskets. Something they have not been able to do here in this opening quarter of play, which winds down to a minute remaining in the opening quarter. Doppold is very content to run the shot clock down here. A minute remaining, 12 on the shot clock. Jayton. Little crossover move, turnaround move into the paint. Scoop and great dish underneath by Uppel. That is a fantastic big time pass off the dribble drive. And the layup is going to go from Sammy Graywall. Graywall with the great lay in from Uppel. 
What a great play that was. Patience in the half court paying off and Palmer in the final minute hoisting up a shot that they can't get. Ooh, an apple close to the over and back there, but he gets by over the half court stripe. Jayton running the shot clock down to 11, about two and a half seconds difference between game and shot clock. Eight on the shot clock now for Apple. He's gonna put on his move in a second. He's gonna hoist the three ball and he will back iron out in the rebound to Pooney. Very quickly hoists and oh, has a great look at the basket, rolls out it in and out. 25-11 will be the score at the quarter. Delview, a huge opening quarter of play. 25 to 11 and they lead this game as we mentioned, Delview coming out of the Fraser Valley had to beat G.W. Graham in a wild card game just to get here. So fantastic effort from the Raiders who have come in well prepared. Clearly have scouted this Palmer team very well and battled through the jitters if there were any in the opening quarter and shot the basketball very well. They shared it and they competed hard underneath as well for loose balls. So the Delview Raiders of North Delta, 25 to 11. If you don't know much about Delview, former feeder school to North Delta, the mighty Huskies in the early 90s. Of course, all the junior highs in North Delta went senior. We thank Mike Stonebrook for the stats here at the minor officials table. And so when they all went senior, we got a number of schools in the North Delta area where that were junior schools only that are suddenly senior programs. This Delview program, one of them. And of course, Vlad Nikic gone in there and the hard work he's put in has made Delview such a great program in the North Delta area, along with the Huskies, Siakam Seahawks, who play at the, well, Siakam plays at the 4A level, and North Delta plays at the 3A level. And then the rest of the schools there, the Burnsview Griffins, the Delview Raiders, the San Scorpions, all playing at the AA level. This Delview team, though, one of the province's best, and a few years ago made a great run, I believe, finishing around sixth or seventh in the province. So a solid, solid program, and here they come, hoping to build on what they did in the 25 to 11. Opening quarter of play. That was gonna get called for stepping out of bounds on the far baseline corner, or the near baseline corner from our broadcast location. Handing the ball right over to the Griffins. Here's Judy, he's gonna put up the big three and he will swish that shot. Right in front of. Solarea there on the baseline corner. Apple now with the ball, swinging it inside to Graywall. Graywall, the shot down low, does it go? And finally some transition here for Palmer for Judy to slice to the basket and he draws the contact. And if you're Delview, you know you can't let that happen. If you let this Palmer team get down the floor in transition, they are gonna really hurt you. We're taking a short break. As you saw there, that is Antonio Judy getting right down the floor. And a run starting to happen here for the Griffins. Very simple, and Vlad Nikic calls for time. You can't let this Palmer team get into transition. Easy baskets. How many easy baskets did Palmer have in the opening half? I'd say precisely zero in a 25-11 deficit. But it's been a 7-0 run here to start the second quarter of play. And getting out on the break off of Delview misses has been the key for R.C. Palmer. So if you're Delview now and you're scheming as to what you want to do, that three's got to be coming a little bit more judiciously. Got to get into a shooting rhythm. Or else try to establish something down low for some higher percentage shots because if you're just going to crank threes and miss, 
Well, the proof is in the pudding, the last couple trips down the floor for R.C. Palmer. Paul Eberhard as well, a BC coaching treasure here with the chance to win. Of course, there's so many games to be played and his team is trailing right now, but coming in as one of the tourney favorites here at the BC Boys AA level. And of course, his Langara College men's team is headed to the CCAA Nationals being hosted by Quest University in Squamish next week. So lots on the plate of Coach Eberhard here as he begins a crazy two weeks of play with his high school team. Saran, the great look down low, can't get it to fall, man the rebound. And that's Pooney quickly on the break. Got the numbers down the floor and they go to Takanaka and he is able to very quickly score the basketball there. The run now 9-0 to start this second quarter of play, Upple with the big three ball, and he will rattle it in and out as Jaden Upple knocks down the big three. O'Donnell set the check in for Delview on the next stoppage, but what a shot by Upple. This kid can shoot the basketball. There is no question about that. There is a high arcing jumper by Takanaka. It won't go Upple with the rebound. Going to hand it off to Antal, and Wowie will take the point guard roll here. Little head fake, pull up from 17, and Antal will knock it down. Delview getting its share of easy baskets now, and they needed a couple of hoops. They've got them. They've got a 10-point lead back. Here's Pooney kicking out to Judy. Well beyond the three, side iron out, and man competing for that rebound. Can't get there. There's a scramble for a loose ball, and... All credit to Wowie and Talon for getting into the midst of the fray there. Harvir Body could have been called for a foul before he even hit the deck. But he gets his arm around the ball and Antalan gets in there as well. They battle for the ball. The alternating possession will go to the Griffins. So Judy will inbound the ball with 25 on the shot clock. 7.37 left here in the opening half of play. Delview Raiders, the R.C. Palmer Griffins, North Delta versus Richmond. Of course, we've had some massive battles at the highest here. This one, though, so thoroughly entertaining. Off the inbounds. And a great look at the basket there by Harvier. He just couldn't get it to fall. Antalan will make him pay by going 94 feet for the layup. So Wowie Antalan with the big basket there, 32-20. A 12-point lead in Delview officially back in the game after a slow start to the start of this second quarter. There is Judy. Wants to go baseline with that turn move. Can't get it to go. But Dow, I believe, will get called for the foul there. So Dow's third of the game, and Graywall will have to come in and spell him. So Judy, the quick inbounds pass. Pooney. Drives into a crowd, can't get it to fall. Loose ball on the floor in Tallinn. Very quickly, it's got a great handle coming up the floor, building up ahead of steam. Oh, wanted to go to Graywall in transition, but the big man unable to come to grips with that fast break offering. The turnover on the play, seven minutes to the half. The lead 12 for the Griffins. Mandeep Parmar. Set the check in for the Raiders. There's a shot by Mann that won't even draw iron, so the Raiders very quickly. And Antalin loved the hesitation, but Judy, or rather Judy uh, now on the end of the fast break. Pooney with the great steal. Judy running the floor hard in transition. Keeps it at 10 here, 32 to 22. A lot of hard sledding ahead for the R.C. Palmer Griffins if they want to avoid the upset here. Trailing by 10. 6.17 remaining in the opening half of play. Of course, there's a lot of time left, but they will need a big run at some point in this basketball game. It looked like they were starting the second half on one, but it was Delview that was able to answer the call. They get a big three from Upple. Great point guard play from Montalan, and just keep the train rolling here. 10-point lead for the Raiders. The boys from 116th Street. Antalan driving into the paint, kicking out. Replacing in the baseline corner. 
but soft on the three-point shot. Here is Pooney driving into traffic, and he's going to draw the contact underneath. It's going to either be Graywall or Untal, and we'll see who gets called for the foul here. And I will correct myself, it's neither. Well, they're calling Jayton Rana, but it is Uppel. He's got Uppel on the back of his jersey. So Jayton Uppel. Jayton, great drive to the basket, extension off the glass, and Reyna will get it to fall. I shouldn't confuse surnames here. We're going with Apple. And a miss there by Takanaka as he tries to answer. Delview is holding its own here. The 10-point lead. And they're not backing down from anything. They continue to attack. Here's Antalan in the half court. Facing a bit of a zone now from Palmer. That's O'Donnell taking the three ball. He's going to miss. And the Griffins with a chance to get into some transition here. Here's Pooney. Driving to the basket, underhanded effort, rolls in and out of the cylinder. Apple with the rebound. Hoisting the three there and making it count for the Griffins is number 11, Damien Herft. Damien Herft. So Herft, a big shot for the Palmer Griffins, will cut the lead to seven. Here is Reyna, that is ridiculous. Off the front iron though, you know he's got the range to hit it. Number situation, three on two. The runner back iron out by Pooney. And O'Donnell with the rebound. So O'Donnell, Uppel, Antalan, Graywall. As, as well as Carm Graywall, number 15. So two Graywalls on the floor right now. This is Carm Graywall. Fading, but getting called for the travel. Turnover on the play is Kanas and Dow. Check back into the game. Dow with three fouls in this game. Apple coming out of the game. I might be his first time out of the game today, as well as the other gray wall. So I'll tell you, this Delview team doesn't look like an unranked double-A team to me. This is a tremendous basketball game. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast here. Howard Tamuro here with you courtside. There's a three ball from the baseline corner by Judy. Great tap but doesn't go back to the Griffins. It just ignites and Tallinn down the floor and, and a sprinter, sprinter's pace down the floor for the layup. 36-27, check that nine point lead for the Raiders. Palmer cross court pass to Pooney. He will let go of the three ball, side iron out and it's gonna go to the Raiders. Caraming out of bounds. Delview Raiders, what an effort, what a start here. 351 from the half, still dictating things on their own terms. This Palmer team trying to figure out, trying to get its feet on the fly here. Because Delview came out all guns a-blazing. And as much as you see how effective Palmer can be in transition off those big misses from three, Delview aggressively on defense is showing you can pick some pockets and get right down the floor as well. And Talon doing a great job in that respect. So 36-27 is the score. Games continuing here all week. The first of four days here at the LEC, of course, the single A boys at the Anderson Gym on the Trinity Western campus, but the championship side of that bracket will arrive at the LEC, I believe, on Friday in the main hockey bowl. So if you're a fan of boys senior varsity basketball, please don't think of the single and double as a precursor to next week. It's a tremendously competitive time here in the opening round. When people complain about blowouts, you come here and see a very competitive game in the opening round between two teams that love to push the tempo. And that's what we're seeing here early. Here's Antal and he will just pull up for that three. That really will keep an opposition on its toes. They will shoot from anywhere in the half court. Here's Judy, little up fake move, and that's a big time basket from Judy. 17 feet out, just flawless execution. Was trying to get Dow up in the air for his fourth, didn't get it. Here's Kanas, down low to Graywall. Turnaround move, 
kick it out to Wowie for three, and Ontalan will come up short. No big carom, though, so they're able to get back defensively. Here's Judy, little head fake. Three is going to back iron out, and Graywall with the rebound. Untalan O'Donnell, Dow, and Graywall. Kanas, the W Raiders on the floor right now. Wowie to O'Donnell, wants to go down low, but Takanaka getting a hand in defensively and a block down low as well by the Griffins, number 14, Takanaka. Oh, and that is a big scoop attempt there by Judy, who pursues the ball, almost gets a second chance to fall. Horrible angle, but he almost got it to go. Wowie on Tallinn right down the floor. Pooney doing his best defensively, gets the strip. And Palmer getting down the floor. He got to credit Delview for their numbers. They got back defensively, but Judy's a hard guy to stop. He powers through the defense to the rim. And the Raiders lead has been trimmed to five here. So Donald to Kanas for three, and he will side iron out. And that can be the Achilles heel of this Delview team, relying too much on the three ball. When they've shot it, they've been dynamic. But they miss a few in a row. They have to give up transition or are forced to defend hard in the half court like they are right now. Using the high screen is Pooney off glass, almost played the angle well. Dow tried to get the rebound. Pooney scoops it up and it will go out of bounds off of Pooney and to the Raiders. Checking into the game and drawing a nice applause from the crowd is Marko Stojanovic, number 44, 5'11", grade 10 on the floor now for the Griffins. Untalan, Kanas, Graywall, O'Donnell, they're working it around. Wowie from the elbow is going to get that to rattle home just inside the three-point arc, 38-31 to 31 now the score. Can't say I'm ever adverse to seeing somebody hit a mid-range jump shot. Nice to see. Talon takes what is given and knocks it down. Seven points to the Delview lead. Here is Judy for three. Oh, the reverse effort underneath the basket there. My body comes close but doesn't go. Foul being called on the play. So O'Donnell, number 71 in black for Delview, getting called for the foul, his first of the game. Judy inbounds to Pooney. Stojanovic. Judy working off the high screen. Kanas doing a great job, though. Trying to slip that screen. Judy follows and will lay it up and in. 38 to 33. It's a five point Delview lead. And Antonio Judy, you start to see why he's considered one of the best offensive players in BC. This kid powers through the traffic, has a great touch around the basket. Here's Graywall kicking out to Wowie Antalan for the three ball. Wowie back iron out the high rebound by Takanaka. Palmer right down the floor with Judy. That shot will not go, and ripping it, they call the jump ball there. And the possession arrow will favor Delview. So O'Donnell set to inbounds up, will check it into the game now for Kanas. That is one fired up coach, Vlad Nikic. He is playing off the emotion. Five point lead here as we head to the half with 12 seconds remaining. Delview ball. They've played a tremendous game to be up by five against the highly ranked R.C. Palmer Griffins and Tallinn. The spin move drawing the contact underneath. But indeed, instead will turn the ball over. So Palmer with only 2.3 seconds left. What can they do in terms of getting a good look? They had a great look at the quarter. Here's Pooney. Coming up short there, but 38 to 33 is the score at the halftime. The Delview Raiders of North Delta with the lead over the RC Palmer Griffins of Richmond. Exciting second game action here from the BC Boys Double A Basketball Championships at the Langley Event Center. Howard Samura here 
with you courtside, bringing you the call in Delview. What a fantastic opening half of play. They're going to have to rally the troops, though, and really try to capture the intensity of the opening quarter where they came out strong and were really dictating the tempo. If you're looking at what happened in terms of a bit of a turnaround there towards the end of the second quarter of play, it was indeed the play of Judy, of the Griffins. He really powered his way around and got things going. So we'll uh, take a short break here and be back in about five minutes here uh, from the Langley Event Center. Mike Stoneberg with the st We'll bring in you the stats in about five minutes before we uh, start the second half of play.
All right, Howard Samura back with you courtside here. Langley Event Center about four minutes away from the second half of play here at the 2014 BC Boys AA Basketball Championships, the halftime score, and we thank the LEC crew for some water. That's tremendous. We'll keep our pipes going here. A long day ahead. I will be broadcasting myself, I believe, three more games here. But please check out the coverage at province.com under the high school icon, and of course, look for us in the newspaper tomorrow. 38 to 33 is the score here. And the Delview Raiders of North Delta, honorable mention team in the last double A rankings with a five point lead over the RC Palmer Griffins. The Griffins, I believe, ranked number three in the province. St. Michael's University School, the alma mater of Steve Nash, sitting at the number one spot, Lambrick Park, their crosstown rivals, the Lions, coached by Ed Summer, sitting at number two, and I believe the Palmer Griffins in at number three. This tremendous Palmer program, of course, the former BC AAA championship program. And of course, the year before that, played at the AA level and lost a mission in the BC final. So a lot of great results. At the highest levels for the Palmer Griffins, the Delview Raiders as well have consistently been one of the top 15 or so programs in the province at their tier. The last few years, Vlad Nikic doing a great job with the Delview Raiders. So we'll get to see what happens. About two and a half minutes away and time to bring you up to date on some of those stats from the half. 18 points for Jayton Reyna of the Delview Raiders, he leads them. Four of 10 from beyond the arc, six of 15 overall, has hit a couple of free throws. Serena with 18 points, and Wowie and Talon, the point guard, 12 points to go along with five rebounds. Reyna playing 14-11, and, and Talon 15-02, so they were workhorses on the court over the opening half of play, as was the big man down low, Sammy Graywall, Six points and four rebounds. He played 16-52. Jacob O'Donnell, 0 of 2 from the field. It's great to see Jayton again here courtside in a great first half that he had. Jayton coming over to shake my hand, and I really appreciate that. I, I am a novice coach. I will make no qualms about it, but when I coached in the eighth grade, Jayton was on my team, and he carried our team. He was amazing, and it's great to see him come over and say hi to his old coach because... Vlad Nikic is certainly a master and has given him so much more, and I'm glad to see he's followed through to become such a great basketball player. Reyna with 18 points at the half to lead Delview. On the other side of the ledger, it's Judy, Antonio Judy with 21 points. Uh, junk defense is being thrown at him in the opening half of play, finding a way to battle through all the junk, and when he was able to get a straight line to the basket, Judy is a powerful, powerful guy driving to the basket. He really is a guy who looks like he could play anywhere on the court, but when he gets going and gets to the basket, he's going to play through the contact and get those N1 opportunities. Judy leading all scorers with 21 points at the half. He played 17-48. Gurji Puni, we should mention, did not leave the floor for the Griffins in the opening half of play and was one of 12 from the field. So he had a tough time trying to get it going here. We're about 24 seconds away from the opening tip of the second half of play here. And great to see the crowds filtering in here at the LEC. As we mentioned, there are three gyms going at this facility for boys double-A and girls double-A and triple-A. So I am having a terrific day floating from venue to venue and I'm gonna sit down and do some writing after this contest I'll rejoin you somewhere around the dial later this afternoon I believe my next game 
on the air will be Golden versus Valley View from this same boys double A side of the draw. Getting set here for the second half of play. Palmer with the ball, a five point lead for the Raiders. <laughs> it's hard to try to identify some of the defenses being thrown the way of the Griffins by the Raiders, but <laughs> they're multiple, they're switching, and they're doing what they can to slow Antonio Judy down as we enter the second half of play. Palmer shot 18.2% from the field. Here's Reyna to Graywall. Kicking it back up top to Antalin, but jumping in the way is Judy. Is Antalin going to fall him? He won't. And Antonio Judy, who slips on the far baseline, looked like a wet spot there. He just crumpled, but he's right back up on the floor. So no harm done there. Judy is Canass to O'Connell. And he will go to the basket, Will O'Donnell. That's his first basket of the game. He was 0 for 2 in the first half. Is not one of the guys looked upon to be a big time scorer in that starting group. But you know what? When your opportunities are there, you seize them. Take it to the lane hard. And O'Donnell did that right there. Here are the Griffins in the half court, swinging the ball and stolen by Reyna. Jayton with the big steal there, bringing it up and will leave it for Antalin. This talented Delview backcourt. O'Donnell to Uppel, or rather Reyna. Great move by Reyna, gets right to the basket. Pursues his miss, and Graywall is underneath, and Jayton working hard underneath, giving his big man a chance. I love the way Jayton is playing in this basketball game. 42 to 37, a seven point lead here for the Raiders. Of course, as we say, had to win a wild card game against GW Graham just to get here. Vlad Nikic told me a couple weeks ago, this is the most talented Delview sports team in any sport boys or girls he feels over his tenure at the school of course Delview years ago won a BC Junior Boys Basketball Championship if I'm not mistaken the late great Dunk Anderson the coach there of that team and, you know, Dunk's looking down and seeing Delview doing well and is smiling about that here's Antalin the drive Skip off glass, won't go in the rebound there. Ooh, coming from behind is Wowie. And believe Antalin is going to get called for the foul there. That's a tough one. It's Antalin's fourth foul of the game. And that comes with 7.54 left in the third quarter. So I'll tell you, that is immediately because they're gonna have to take him off the floor. Jayton is gonna have to assume a huge role in the backcourt here. There's the ball being swung down low and man cutting hard to the basket will get the layup. 42 to 37 now the score. Raiders, or check that, the Griffins have retrenched. Here's Reyna wanting to go off the glass. Can't get it to go. And the Griffins able to rip the ball out and body helps get his team down the floor. Judy, great cut on the baseline by Mann and Antonio Judy feeds him. That is a big time pass and a big time basket on the baseline for the Palmer Griffins. 42 to 39, it's a one possession game. Seven minutes left, there is Antalin, the floater in the lane and Wowie living up to the name there. Tremendous offensive basketball game right now coach Eberhardt getting emotional on the sidelines coach Nikic as well for Delview Puni guarded by Kanas to body Takanaka coming out to receive the ball at the three. Instead to Judy, finds a lane, knifes in against the double team, underhanded and gets the layup! That is a huge basket by Antonio. Judy splits the double team. And the scoop off glass will fall. Big time basket. Judy shows you what he's all about there, attacking the basket 
44 to 41. Huge basket there. Here is Reyna. Looked at a step back three instead to Kanas for three. Back iron out and Takanaka with the rebound. Puni. And here come the Griffins. 6.02 left in the third and they are trailing by one possession. Judy back iron out. And Reyna with the rebound. Jayton, great move at half court. One hand pass to O'Donnell in the corner for the three ball. Back iron out. But a rebound by Graywall. He turns and he goes off the glass. Second chance effort and no one keeps him off the glass. And Graywall with a big hoop on his second chance opportunity underneath. 5.37 remaining here in the third. And these teams keep exchanging. Offensive highlight reels at each end. Great second effort there by Graywall off the glass to put that shot back. Here's Pooney. And he's going to draw the contact as he drives the baseline. Gurjeet Pooney drawing the contact on the baseline. Timeout being called here by the Raiders. 46 to 41. The Griffins have got within a possession. And we're talking three points here. Delview led by as much as 14 in the opening half of play. Right now, the lead at five. Timeout on the floor, and Delview hanging tough. But you do see the talent and the skill and the reason the Griffins are so highly ranked. They keep coming at you, and that Antonio Judy is a special player, a 6'1", senior guard. Gurjeet Puni. Harvir uh, Badi, Rio Takanaka, Mann, Harmon Mann, and Antonio Judy. The starters for this Palmer team, all seniors. On the other side of the ledger, Kanas, Reyna, Untalan, Sammy Graywall, and Jacob O'Donnell, the five starters here for Delview. And Dow right now, 24 into the game for Untalan, is the only non-starter on the floor for the Raiders. Here is Gurjeet Puni from the free throw line. Big question here right now is that Delview backcourt. Untalan on the bench with four fouls early in the second half as Puni hits the second. Can the Delview Raiders keep a semblance of what they want to do for extended stretches here. And they will test the ball handling skills of these Raiders. There's Reyna trying to break the double team and he does. Reyna right to the basket and Jayton, that is a huge basket, 94 feet. He breaks the press by himself and goes coast to coast for the layup. Great effort by Jayton Reyna. He's basically saying, I can run the point here guys. And if you want to trap, and you see now they, they're backing off on that pressure. Jayton is a master of the hesitation dribble. That's Pooney guarding him. Pooney, who never left the floor in the opening half play, rubbed off by the O'Donnell screen. Step back three, and he will knock it down! Jayton Reyna, a huge three! That is a big time shot by Reyna. Step back three. He can lull you to sleep, attack you, and knock down big shots. I remember a game, might have been in the ninth grade, where he was playing for Sands, and they were playing at Siakwam, trailing by a massive amount of points, and he literally scored, I don't know if they scored 25 points to end the game. He might have scored 22 of them and he carried them into overtime. They lost, Sands did, but Reyna was incredible. And he's been at Delview since the 10th grade. It's now his third and final year. That class of 94. There's a great skip pass down low. Judy playing the role of the point guard. He's a facilitator there for Takanaka underneath the basket. Here's Mann and Takanaka trying to cut off Reyna. So they go to O'Donnell trying to get across the half court stripe and he can't get there in time. He is just shy, and the Palmer defense pays some dividends there. They worked it well. The officials will talk this over. Reyna and Graywall both uh, wanting to know what the officials are saying here. He's the 
And Vlad Nikic is trying to make his point to the officials. And <laughs> normally you'll say, hey, the coach doesn't know. Vlad Nikic is a pretty darn good official as well. So he knows what he's talking about as well. So pretty entertaining scenario building up here. The guy, the guy lives and breathes the game. And as we say, I've shown up at games and <laughs> pretty high level games. And there's Vlad in the stripes refing. So he does a lot of everything here with the game. Here come the Raiders. They will keep the ball. And Reyna now with the ball. It's got Judy to beat. Or check that Pooney. O'Donnell's going to come up and try and set a screen. Jayton. Is he actually putting that up? It's from near center court. Dow with the rebound. Kanas, the quick dish to Graywall. One bounce off the window. Won't go. And ripping the ball free is Takanaka. Pooney there with the ball now leading the break. Beats Kanas to the corner to man for three. And that's going to come up way short. But underneath is Batty scooping up the garbage and putting it home. It's 51 to 46 to score. What a game. Here's Delview breaking the half court trap. Man, though, will get the steal. He's going to find Judy down the floor, powering through Kanas. And the goggled one is going to get called for the foul, I believe. Kanas sporting the Horace Grant uh, eyewear. They will count the basket, and the end one opportunity is going to be there for Antonio Judy. I'll tell you, Kanas, though, showing the courage, standing in there, trying to draw the foul. Nikic wants a timeout, and Delview will come off the floor. They're still leading, but it's at 51-48. to 48. The lead trimmed by 11 points from their game-high 14. 3.05 left in the third quarter. Hope you're enjoying this web stream from the BC Boys AA Basketball Championships at the LEC. Howard Samura with you courtside. And it's been a thriller. Steady, steady R.C. Palmer, confident in its ability to come back. Delview playing off of great emotion. Of course, Delview getting here by winning a wild card game against G.W. Graham just to qualify for the draw. And you have to love the heart and soul factor that they bring to this contest. Delview building up a 14-point lead in the opening half of play. And Palmer very patiently getting back to within a possession on three occasions now. Still not over to put it over the top, but have done a great job in rallying. And we get to see a fourth quarter stretch drive that could go either way. On the Delview side of the ledger, of course, you saw how effective Jayton Reyna can be. Starting off as that two guard and the starting set with Wowie Antalan at the point. Of course, Antalan picking up his fourth foul two minutes and six seconds into the second half. And so he's sitting now, and Reyna, along with Kanas, in that backcourt. Although Wowie now is into the game. And trying to complete the end one now is Judy, and he will get the rattle and the roll and the make. It's a two-point game, 51 to 49, the score. And here come the R.C. Palmer Griffins. Delview getting across the half court stripe. Here's Reyna, sees a lane to the basket, jump stop, pop, second effort off the glass from his own miss, doesn't go, and Pooney to Judy down the floor in transition, and there he is, Ju Antonio Judy is a one-man wrecking crew. He goes down the floor and will tie this game at 51. So Judy, with 2.48 left in the third quarter, he goes the distance and gets the opportunity and does, gives the Griffins a lead, their first lead of the game, 52 to 51. 12 minutes and 42 seconds of their best is what the Delview Raiders need if they want to get to the next round. Baseline wide open, Reyna off the glass and Jayton will make it count. That is an explosive move by Reyna on the baseline to put his team back in front by one. So Jayton Reyna, great effort there. There's O'Donnell rubbed off the screen high by Takanaka. The Judy 
offering doesn't fall and we're looking at Antonio Judy from across the court. He's got a bandage over his left eye. It's been physical as he's driven to the basket on many occasions here. So Donald inbounding the ball to Kanas. Antalin with the four fouls. Quickly down the floor to Graywall. Cutting wide open on the baseline. And that's Reyna. He will put it home. 55 to 52 now the score. And Jaden putting himself in the right spots on the floor. Great look for him by Graywall. They get the layup down low. Delview retrenching here. Lead back up to 55 to 52. Palmer, under two minutes remaining in the third quarter. That's Pooney. Gets some space on a pass back. No arc on that shot though. Front iron out at the shot clock buzzer. And Wowie in full flight. And Tallinn, guarded by body down low. Graywall wants to try it on the baseline. He gets two shots at it. Palmer just does not have the size to keep Graywall off the glass. And Graywall's second chance effort is gonna yield some points here. This is a big run. This is an eight point run by Delview. Takanaka the rebound, kicking it back out to Judy from the elbow, the step back, and he will knock down that shot. Antonio Judy, 54 to 57 the score, one minute remaining, third quarter. Raiders back in the half court. Reyna thought about the three, hesitation, off the window, can't get it to fall, and man there with the rebound. Very quickly the transition fed, and Puni surveys the situation. There's Body back to Puni. Man, Takanaka, and Judy, the other Palmer players on the floor. Here's Takanaka, the turnaround move against Graywall. Go to the basket, off the window, and Ryo Takanaka says, hey, I got some offense in myself as well. The spin move to beat Graywall on the baseline makes it a one-point game as we're down to 20 seconds left in this third quarter of play. The Raiders, who surrendered the lead once, have a one-point lead. Reyna with the ball. Shot clock turned off, down to 10, down to nine, down to eight. So calm. Fakes the three, goes to Antalin for three, and Wowie knocks it down with 1.1 seconds left in the third quarter, and Wowie hits the three-pointer, makes it 60 to 56. Delview has yielded 10 points off their largest lead of the quarter, their largest lead of the game, check that. It's down to four, but they've shown some resiliency. They went down by a point, they battled back, and they're doing a terrific job here. So Howard Simmera back with you here, courtside, 30 seconds left for the start of the fourth quarter. Run down those numbers really quickly. Judy's leading the way here with 33 points for the RC Palmer Griffins. On the other side of the ledger, though, more balanced scoring, and that's going to benefit Delview down the stretch. As Jayton Reyna's 10 of 24, 27 points, and Wowie Antalin with 17. As well, Sammy Graywall double figures with 12 points. Right now, Judy, Antonio Judy, 12 of 23, 8 of 8 from the stripe is the only. R.C. Palmer player in double figures. He's got 33. Grigit Puni with eight. And Ryo Takanaka with six. Harmon Mann with four. Harvir Body with two. So the Delview backcourt doing a terrific job. And here they come again. As we mentioned, Reyna leading the way with those 27 points. So Reyna with 27. And Judy with 33 for Palmer. Here we go, the final quarter of play. It's a four-point Delview lead. Turnaround move by Graywall, hard off the glass. How many second chances are you going to give this kid underneath the basket? They don't put a body on him. He's going to get the offensive board in the putback. He did just that there. Graywall now with 14 points in this game. Delview is resilient. There is no question about it. They're finding ways to manufacture points in the face of this one-man show from Judy. who set the inbounds of all now. Judy quickly out to Puni. Gurjeet Puni. Yeah. 
There is the three ball being hoisted by Pooney. It's not going to foul and foul and Wowie now with the ball. And Talon and, Re and Reina, they become the threat here. That that lazy lob though to O'Donnell gets picked off. Takanaka, the great follow, and that is a big time hoop. Judy following is able to put that touch pass back and in. So a big hoop there for the Griffins who needed to dig their heels in offensively. They get it off a turnover. Here's Jayton Reyna off the glass and Jayton. Delview continues to find ways to get lanes to the basket and that guy can do it as good as anybody in the province. Love the way Reyna's played in this game. There's Takanaka, a little fake. It's gonna go right into Kanas, who's gonna get called for the foul. The little guy standing in there again. The Kanas will get called for the foul. This is an absolute war. Shaping up here down the stretch drive. Saran now set the check in for Kanas. Looks like Graywall will also come out of the game. Well, Kanas stays in there. It's, it's Graywall that comes out. So, Untalan, Kanas. Reyna, O'Donnell, and Saran in the game for Delview. Takanaka hitting the first. Puni, Badi, Judy, Takanaka. Among the Palmer Griffins on the floor right now. So Kanas will come out of the game. And Dow will come in. So I believe I believe Dow and Antalan both have four fouls. So some jeopardy there, and important from the Palmer perspective that they know they're well aware that Wowie's got the four. Front iron out by Takanaka, but they're going to get it back. And right into the hands of Judy, who drives into the basketball, drives into the paint, rather. And even though it looked like Reyna had dispossessed him of the ball, he somehow gets it back for the layup. This is Graywall standing right in front of me. <laughs> Set the check into the game. We appreciate that, Sammy. And here's the Ra Raiders Saran on the baseline, just missing that shot and triggering the transition here. Quickly down the floor is Judy, and he's going to get the roll. Amazing. Antonio Judy. With a chance to tie it, an end one opportunity here. He plays right through contact. And that's a trait of his that is hard to ignore. So Saran with the foul, he's going to come out of the game. And Graywall will spell him. Graywall was setting, to get set to check in before that even happened. There is the free throw, the N1 being made by Judy, who's pushing 40 in this game now. 64-64 is the score. Great cut, Dow, and Dow will go off the window. Nikic wanted a foul there, wanted an N1 opportunity. Takanaka right down the floor, loving this basketball game. It is up and down, up and down. A terrific contest here, tied at 66. Reyna now with the ball. There is Reyna, wants to go off the glass, and Jayton doesn't get the roll. Tough break for him. Right down the other way, and Pooney, who was 1 of 12 in the opening half, can't convert. Leaves it shy on the iron, but they get the ball back. Whistle on the play. So perhaps some shot clock issues are going to add. 10 seconds to the shot clock. 28 on the shot clock for Palmer set to inbound the ball. Judy will inbound to Pooney. Dow out to guard him. 7.23 remaining in a tie ball game. Reversal. And Judy puts up the three, doesn't go. Graywall skying for the rebound there. Sammy Graywall doing a great job rebounding the basketball. Plays waved off.
Pooney, who hasn't left the floor basically the whole game, gets his first foul right to the basket, though, is Reyna. Jayton's great take is going to put the Raiders in front, 68 to 66. Great effort by Jayton Reyna. What a player. Jayton Reyna is having a terrific basketball game here. Six thirty-seven left. Pooney, corner. Oh, in and out. By the Griffins, Herf, number 11, right down the floor. And Talon lowers the shoulder. He's going to get the basket. Wowie, Delview is showing some life here. They're showing a heck of a lot here. And this is the time you think an unranked team playing a provincially ranked power would begin to fade, but Delview's getting stronger the last few possessions. There's a three ball by Pooney that's not going to go. Graywall with the rebound, and Reyna quickly up the floor for Delview. That is Reyna being guarded by Pooney using the Graywall screen. He's going to split through the defense. No, he won't. Judy with the steal. Untalan, the only one down, and then Wowie backs off because he's got four fouls in the game, and they need him. So he lets Judy go right to the rack for the layup 70 to 68 now is the Delview lead down at two points this is gonna be one heck of a finish here is Reyna and he is fouled as he shoots the three ball and Jaden Reyna is gonna get the shoot three we would think here so Judy with his third Reyna's going to get a chance to shoot three. <laughs> Jayton back iron out off the top of the goal on the second. Made the first. Has a chance to go two out of three here. And Reyna making the second, so two of three, making it 72-68 with 5.23 left in the game. What a basketball game here today. My host Chris Kennedy on the Double A draw show, we both zeroed in on this game as being likely the best game of the first day, even though it was a three seed. Basically a three seed against a, I'm doing my math here, um, <laughs> a 14, a 14 seed. A three versus a 14, but you don't expect this kind of stuff to be happening. But if you know the history behind the Delview program and its ability to match up in a track meet, against a team like Palmer, you know you're going to get a good matchup, and that's what we've seen here. Here's Wowie pulling up from three. Untalan will front iron out. Graywall, huge fingertips there, and Sammy the turnaround, and Graywall will get a big, big basket for Delview. His ability on the offensive glass against this uh, size challenge Palmer team has been huge. Sammy Graywall, the big fingertips there lead to the offensive rebound. Underneath the basket, they kick it back out. Herft. Back up top to Pooney. Down to Herft in the corner for three, and oh, Damian unable to knock down the three there. Pursuit of the loose ball, batted. Takanaka can't get it. Herft saves it to Ryo. And swinging it to Pooney, who goes right to the glass against Reyna. And Jayton with the foul underneath. When the ball swings like that and pinballs like that, it can be pretty darn tough to know what you're doing, and defensively, it's hard to put yourself in the right spot. So really, Reyna, a tough spot defensively. As that ball pinballed around, and the hard cut to the basket made by Pooney, who makes the first, and makes the second. Makes it a four-point game with 4.25 remaining. If you're Palmer, it's all about stops, but how do you stop a force like Untalan underneath the gray wall? 
And oh my gosh, body coming down is gonna get called for the foul against Graywall. So Sammy with a chance here. Sammy with a chance at a couple of free throws here, 74 to 70, can make it a two possession game. Needs to gather himself though, not a lot of grace on the first free throw. We'll see what Graywall can do as he resets mentally. He's got a funky release. Unable to get either of those to fall. See the big follow through. Bit of a mechanical hitch there. Underneath the basket and Takanaka able to get the quick basket. Palmer wanted a quick answer to those two misses with the clock stopped and they get it. Here's O'Donnell with the big three ball and he will side iron out. Graywall though, another offensive rebound. This kid's having a huge game off the offensive glass in the second half, wants to go down low to Dow. But man, some great defensive effort there underneath the basket. Pooney to man, head fake, baseline, kicking him back out top to Pooney. Dow guarding him with the four fouls and Pooney says thank you very much. He knocks down the big triple. 3.34 remaining. Ooh, and Reyna can't get that one to fall. It'll go out of bounds. So off the Pooney three, the Griffin's getting the ball back. They, with the 75-74 lead, only Palmer's second lead of the game. As we mentioned, they trailed by as many as 14. Pooney again, this time missing. Graywall, another rebound for the Delview Raiders of North Delta. Untalan down the floor. Here is Wowie. Terena splits the defense, goes to the basket. Jayton will get hooked down low, dragged down, and get a chance to shoot a couple of free throws. So Reyna, the big-time opportunity here to put his team back up by one. Jayton playing a great game here. Reyna missing on the first. No mistake on the second though. This game tied at 75. With 2.53 left. Here is Gurjeet Puni. Drive it on Dow, the turnaround move off the glass, and it will fall. So Pooney, who was one for 12 in the opening half, has caught fire here a bit late, hits the three, now the big drive, and Body getting up slowly after hitting the deck, but getting that rebound. It is a two point Del uh, Palmer lead with 2.13 remaining. And it looks like we've got a great finish happening here. Here is Pooney guarded by Untalan, coming around the corner, but they'll go the other way. Down to man in the corner, side iron out, battle for the ball down low, and Dow with the rebound for the Raiders. Wowie now. It's gonna pull up at the three, and Untalan will not draw iron. But if you're Delview, you live with those misses. They're a dynamic shooting team, and you gotta take those as part of the good with the bad, Untalan. Showing some fatigue, doesn't draw iron on that pull-up effort. Now this Delview team has brought it start to finish. They're doing a great job. Only trailing by two. Of course, the lead as many as 14 at one stage in this basketball game for the Delview Raiders. Delview out of North Delta. You don't know where that school is. It was a long time junior high school. They at one stage, I believe, won the BC Grade 9 Junior Boys Championship. I think it was. 
And uh, the coach of that team, Dunk Anderson, the late Dunk Anderson, who was a fixture in North Delta basketball. At one stage, Delview and Sands, along with Burnsview, would feed North Delta Secondary School. And I know that stuff because I'm a North Delta grad, class of 81. Go Huskies, who are not here at this tournament. But basically, North Delta was being fed by three junior high schools. And when they all went senior, they moved to smaller tiers. And you haven't heard a lot about some of these schools. Siaquam has made their odd stab at the BC highest tier AAA championships. North Delta, always a quality team. At one stage, ranked number one, but not here at this turn. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm getting confused with AAA. I'm sorry. There's so many tiers. But North Delta, um, a top team at AAA this year, were ranked number one at one point, I believe. And then, of course, Delview's been Delta's flagship AA program for a number of years. Back to live action with under two minutes remaining. It's a two-point lead for the Griffins, who have the ball in white. That is Gurjeet Puni. Driving against Wawi Antal and the skip pass on the baseline was going for Antonio Judy O'Donnell guarding Judy. And they will rule Delview ball. Now they're saying it went off a Delview player are the Griffins, but they're not going to get the call. 141 left in this basketball game. Untalan playing with the four fouls. He picked up that fourth early in the third quarter. The drive, the turnaround, the shot off glass is not going to fall. Battle for a loose ball underneath. Dow doing a great job battling for that ball. Untalan as well. And I'll tell you, every time I see Harvir Batty, he's on the bottom of a pile fighting for the ball. Batty's going to win this battle. He's going to keep possession of the ball. Harvir. Set to inbound the ball, 30 on the shot clock, 129 left in a two-point lead for the R.C. Palmer Griffins. Howard Samura here courtside with you at the Langley Event Center. An absolute thriller here in the opening round of the BC Boys AA Basketball Championships live from the Langley Event Center. Hope you're enjoying our broadcast here today. As the Griffins bring the ball up the floor, that is Puni. Untalan, staying square off to Judy. O'Donnell taking the big job down the stretch drive here of trying to shut down the most explosive player on this Palmer team, and that's Judy. Fake step back, back iron out. The rebound enough by Body, who got enough fingertips on that ball. He didn't clip his nails before this game, and he needed every centimeter he could find to get a handle on that thing and maintain possession. Takanaka. 4-3 is going to front iron out a loose ball on the floor. Scramble on the floor. Jump ball being called. And the possession arrow will favor the Delview Raiders. And you can see the exhaustion in the faces of these Delview players. Boy, O'Donnell looks like he's been through a war. And Talon Dow, Graywall, and Arena, the other Delview players on the floor. It's Man, Takanaka, Body. Antonio Judy and of course the point guard Gurji Puni. What a basketball game for opening day. I love it. Howard Samura here. Loving the tradition of this tournament. And two A basketball. If you're letting the number in front of the A get in the way, you are losing out because this has been tremendous, tremendous basketball. Here is Reyna. Fighting off multiple screens to come up to the front to take the ball here. With 16 on the shot clock, 30 minutes, 30 seconds left in the game. There's Reyna, big basket, Jaden, the great feed underneath, and Reyna, oh, they will get called for the travel. Oh my gosh, what a huge call there because Graywall was right in position for the lay in. Off the penetration dish from Reyna with 24.9, the basket. Waved off. And the score will remain 77 to 75 for the Palmer Griffins. We have 24.9 seconds left. Palmer basketball coming out of this timeout. And a tough break there for the Delview Raiders. Love the way Reyna turned the corner and dished on the baseline. He found the open man. Graywall was all alone for the layup and couldn't cash in. 
getting called for the travel there. What a huge play late in this basketball game, keeping it at two points. Tremendous, tremendous action. One team is going to be elated. One's going to be heartbroken in a matter of seconds unless we get overtime here. But it's been a fantastic opening round game. You can't ask for much better on the boys' double-A side of the draw than seeing a 50-point performance in off of 11 trays in the first game and then to step in and see a one-possession battle, an absolute war down the fourth-quarter stretch drive between the Delview Raiders and the R.C. Palmer Griffins. What a basketball game this has been. The key combatants on Talon and Reyna, number seven for Delview, and Judy and Pooney, number 10 and number five respectively for the Griffins have been masterful for their teams. And we'll see what happens here. 24.9, Palmer inbounding the ball. Body to Judy. O'Donnell guarding him and will foul him immediately. Delview willing to trade, and that's what you can do when you are a three-point shooting team. First basket for Judy is gonna go. Judy is gonna make it 78-75. And he makes it 79-75 with 21.3 left. Oh, and a steal! There is a steal by Judy. He's going to get the ball, come right down the floor, play through the contact, and not get it to fall. But Judy is going to get to the free throw line in a four point lead right now. They have come back from 14 down, have the Palmer Griffins. This Delview Raiders team has brought everything. They have left nothing on the floor. What a terrific effort! But they're in a tight spot now with 13.9 seconds left. And Judy getting two more free throws off of a steal. It's been a tremendous basketball game. Hope you've enjoyed the webcast here from the Langley Event Center. Howard Samura with you. I will be doing uh, one more guys double-A game later in the afternoon. I believe it's Valley View of Kamloops. I'll get a chance to watch them against Golden. And then two girls double-A games later tonight. My task this morning, talking and watching the broadcasting, the Oak Bay Breakers win over Argyle on the BC Girls AAA side of the draws. Graywall coming off the floor after a yeoman's effort. He has been huge on the offensive glass all game. I'll tell you, Judy, and if the Griffins happen to survive this, can look to number 10 as a clutch force down the stretch drive of this basketball game. He's not leaving points on the floor. It's a two-possession game now. And what an effort as Reyna hoists a three. No call there. Five. Clock ticking down, and Takanaka with the ball quickly to man down the floor. They're going to run it out, and the Delview Raiders are going to come to him to a crushing defeat, but they were so good for so long. They have every reason to be proud, and you got to think, as they work their way through the loser side of the bracket, if they keep this intensity, they are going to make some major noise. R.C. Palmer, though, dodging a bullet. Antonio Judy playing heads up, clutch basketball down the stretch drive, and the R.C. Palmer Griffins will come away with the victory here, 81 to 75. It's a six point victory for the Richmond squad over North Delta's honorable mention, Delview Raiders, but what a battle from start to finish. We watch the play of Antalan and Reyna from the Raiders. We'll see who gets player of the game here. For the, for the Delview Raiders, Antonio Judy though, number 10, was superb down the stretch drive and what a game by the Delview Raiders coming up achingly short of a huge first round upset. They will fall by six, 81 to 75. Howard Samura here courtside. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast and uh, we're gonna actually give you just a couple of quick stats before we leave you. And we thank uh, Mr. Stoneberg for those stats. The points that matter, Jayton Reyna with 34 points, Wowie Untalan with 19. Leading the way though, Antonio Judy, 46 points, including 13 of 13 from the stripe. He had four straight down the stretch drive of that basketball game and what an effort to lift his team to the victory here today. Howard Samura with you and we will join you later.